We are going to start with lesson 84 today, and we are back on trig identities. So remember, I did print, uh, or I did attach a, a printout like this. You could also just Google trig identities, um, and there's probably a million of these little cheat sheets. But it has all the trig identities on it, and it has the unit circle. Super helpful to have. Stick it in your notebook. All right, so... Um, 84.a goes over factorable expressions. Now, we've been factoring, we know how to factor, but we are going to be factoring trig expressions. So um, I'm going to go over several just so you have them. So if I had sine cubed of x, okay, this can be broken down as the sine of x times sine squared of x. And you might ask yourself, why is that important? Because there is a proof or there's an identity involving sine squared, um, sine squared of x plus the cosine squared of x equals one. So when I factor this, I can then um, go back to those identities. Um, the next one, tangent squared of theta minus one. Now that is a difference of two items squared. So this can be factored as the tangent of theta plus one and the tangent of theta minus one. Next, um, the reverse, 1 minus the tangent squared of theta, and this would work with sine or cosine. The only difference is 1 would be first. So 1 plus the tangent of theta, 1 minus the tangent of theta. Moving on, um, the sine of x minus sine x cosine squared x. Um, in this one, I have a greatest common factor. I can factor out the sine of x, and I have 1 minus the cosine squared of x. And right when I see that cosine squared of x, I know that's one of the forms of this identity. These are the three main identities, this Pythagorean identities. And there are three forms of that one, right? Because I can subtract sine squared, or I can subtract cosine squared. So moving on. If I have cosecant to the fourth of x minus cotangent fourth of x, that is also a difference of two squares. Um, and sorry, this one up here could have been broken down further. Sine of x times one plus the cosine of x times one minus the cosine of x, right? Because this is a difference of two squares. And so is this. This would be the cosecant squared of x minus the cotangent squared of x times the cosecant squared of x plus the cotangent squared of x. And then, of course, this could be broken down further because this is a difference of two squares. But they're using that because of our identity here. Okay. Um, I'm only going to do one, or two, uh, one more. So if I have the sine cubed of theta plus the cosine cubed of theta, that is a sum of two cubes. And so my factors would look like sine squared of theta plus cosine, whoops, of theta. There's no squared here. My bad. So factorable expressions is a review of our difference of squares, um, of our sum and difference of cubes, GCF factoring. I mean, it's all the things we've learned about factoring all in one dealing with trig identities. So then the next factor is sine squared of theta plus sine theta cosine theta plus cosine squared theta. So that is a sum of two cubes. So we're going to be using this knowledge to um, deal with our um, trig identities. I'm going to do one last one. 1 minus 2 sine squared x plus sine fourth of x. Now, it might be easier to picture this as 1 minus 2x squared plus x to the fourth. That might be a lot easier to picture because then you can see the factors would be um, 1 
minus the sine squared of x and 1 minus the sine squared of x because the factors of this guy would be 1 minus x squared times 1 minus x squared. Okay, so this is an example to show that that is your factors. So um, we're going to be doing some more proofs using trig identities. So number one, show that the sine of x minus the sine x cosine squared of x equals sine cubed of x. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor the left. So the left-hand side, I have a GCF of the sine of x, and that would give me 1 minus cosine squared of x. And then I can replace this guy using my trig identity. This equals the sine squared of x. And then I'm going to bring this down, the sine of x. And sine of x times sine squared of x equals the sine cubed of x because you have three of them. All right. So um, it doesn't. I'm going to rewrite like that. All right, number, the next one, number two. Show that the secant um, fourth x minus the tangent fourth x divided by the secant squared x plus tangent squared x plus the tangent squared of x equals that all of this equals secant squared of x. So remember when you're looking at these, you need to know who your reciprocal functions are. You need to have your trig identities with you. You need to be able to factor. There's a lot going on. So I'm going to rewrite that top. That's why I went over uh, uh, it up here. This is really a difference of two squares. Secant squared of x minus the tangent squared of x times secant squared of x plus the tangent squared of x all over. I'm going to write the bottom. And I'm sure you can already see what is going to cancel. So looking at this, or I'm going to grab another pen. I know these will cancel. And so I'm left with the secant squared x minus tangent squared x plus tangent squared x. And notice that if I take off the parentheses, the tangents would cancel, and I'm just left with the secant squared of x. Next, show that the remember we're proving that the left hand side truly does um, equal the right hand side. All right, so on the left, I'm going to factor the top because I recognize that that is a difference of two squares. So that gives me the cosecant of x minus 1 times the cosecant of x plus 1 divided by the tangent of x. And that doesn't really give me anything. I don't know if you noticed, but okay, I'm looking at this and I'm like, man, that doesn't prove anything. Maybe there is a, another way to prove this. So um, that doesn't help me. So then I'm going to look at my identities. So maybe I've forgotten cosecant squared of x. Let's see here. Here's cosecant squared of x. Oh, so if I just subtract 1, I'm using this proof right here. 1 plus the cotangent squared of x equals the cosecant squared of x. So if I subtract 1, then I've now got the cosecant squared of x equals the cotangent. So this is now cotangent squared of x because that's what this top expression equals. Now this is going to help me get to three of them, right? Because I now have the cotangent squared of x times 1 over the tan of x. And based on my um, reciprocal identity, 
1 over the tangent of u or any letter equals the cotangent of u. So this is now the cotangent squared of x times cotangent squared of x, which equals cotangent cubed of x. So that might have been a little, little too much, but it does work out perfectly. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to 84 point B, which is graphing. We are now, instead of writing the equation, going to be graphing sinusoids by hand. So 84 point B is on sketching the graphs. of sinusoids. So um, let's review our equation. y equals a plus b sine of c and theta minus d. It's just an example. Let's go over all of our parts. a is our center line. b is our amplitude. c is our period. But that also means the number of full cycles in 360 degrees. It's technically what that value means. And then D is our phase shift or horizontal shift. So we're going to jump right in. And I'm going to show you the way I graph them. If you don't like my method, then you can use a different one. But let me grab my ruler. All right, so graph y equals negative 10 plus 2 sine of 3 and x minus 45 degrees. All right, so um, the first thing I notice is uh, my center line, amplitude 3. If c equals 3, then that means that 360 divided by 3 is 120. That means that um, in 120 degrees, I will complete a full cycle. Um, D is negative 45, so that's actually a shift to the right 45 degrees. Because if, if the standard setup is subtract, then 45 is actually a positive whoops, then D is actually a positive 45 degrees. So here is how I do it. I'm going to sketch the graph of the original and then shift everything. So I know that my center line is at negative 10, so I'm going to put a dashed line. And I know my amplitude is 2, so um, up 2 would be negative 8, and down 2 would be negative 12. So I've got that. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my pencil. And I'm, well, at first I guess I should figure out. I need, a, I need to make this easy. And so I'm going to do every box is 30. So if this is 30 degrees, this is 60, 90 Right, this would be 120, 150, um, 180, and so on. So this would be what, 210, 240, 270, 300, 330, this would be 360. Now the reason I did this is because um, I can easily find 45, but I need to do a full cycle. So I'm going to use my pencil. Sign starts at on our origin, and I need a full cycle in 120. So up one, middle, down one. Here is a full cycle in 120 degrees. I have one mountain and one valley. And so I made it four boxes because I have four parts. I have a peak, center line, bottom, center line. So that makes it easy to break it up. And so I'm just going to continue this graph. And you don't have to make your graphs crazy long, but I'm just going to do a rough sketch in pencil. of where it would be before your phase shift. 
So now that I have this rough sketch, I have my period, I have my amplitude, I have my center line. The only thing we've got to do is now shift it right 45 degrees. So I'm going to move each point to the right 45 degrees. Now 45 degrees, if this is 30 and this is 60, 45 would be there. And so I'm shifting each point 1.5 boxes to the right. So 1.5, I'm just going to shift each point. 1.5, 1 1.5, 1. I think this is the easiest way. Okay, you might disagree with me, and that's fine. Maybe you um, find a way that makes more sense to you. But now I'm going to uh, attach it. Whoops, I didn't put a point right there. And the more you graph these, the easier it becomes. And so there is your graph. Next one, graph y equals negative 2 plus 4 cosine 2 x plus 2 pi over 3. All right, so I'm going to move this up. All right, so the easy part is the center line. And I usually put cosine in the middle because it starts on the origin. And so we've got a center line of negative 2, so I start there. And an amplitude of 4, so negative 2 plus 4 would be positive 2. Negative 2 minus 4 would be negative 6. So there's our center line and our amplitude done and taken care of. Next, though, is I'm going to deal with, I've got a period, so C equals 2, so 360 divided by 2 equals 180 degrees. So I have a full cycle in 180 degrees, which also equals pi. And I notice I put it in pi because, or radians, because this is in radians. So... Uh, D equals a negative 2 pi over 3 because that's the only way this would become a positive. Theta minus a negative would make it theta plus. So I'm going to be moving to the left 2 pi radians. Now because my shift is in thirds, that's how I'm going to break this graph up. So for example, I'm going to do... Um, I'm going to do pi over 3. This would be 2 thirds pi, right? And this would be pi. This would be negative pi over 3. This would be negative 2 pi over 3. This would be negative pi. Sorry, negative radians. My bad. All right, so using a pencil, I'm going to do my original. My original would start up here at 2, right, because it's cosine, but I need a full cycle. I need another peak here. That's six boxes, so I, every um, one and a half will be a new location. Um, and if you're ever like, okay, how do I divide? Um, I had one, two, three, four, I have five points that need to occur in six boxes. So I'm going to draw a rough, remember, uh, I'm going every one and a half boxes, and I'm going to draw a rough sketch, and then we will shift our graph. And you might have to play around with things till you find out the, the spacing. So I'm moving to the left 2 thirds pi. So I'm moving this point here to 2 thirds pi. So that was four boxes. So I'm going to move every point four boxes. So this would go one, two, three, four. Um, this point here would go one, two, three, four. This point here would go one, two, three, four. 
Um, so we're just moving everything. One, two, three, two. And um, you can make these graphs as big or as small. Whoops. My computer timed out. Sorry, S H E. Okay. And then I'm going to trace my graph. So that's how I do it. I trace the original. So using your period using your center line, using your amplitude, and then I draw, I take a pen to do my phase shift. So that's what it makes it easiest for me. Um, last one. So we're going to um, sketch the graph of y equals 5 plus 8 sine of 1 half theta minus 90 degrees. All right, so let's just start. Sorry. I'm going, I always start with my center line. So I have a center line at positive 5. So I notice I don't change the spacing of how tall my amplitude. I just change my numbers. So 5 pl um, plus 8 would be 13, 5 minus 8 would be negative 3. Okay, so it's always two boxes apart. All right, so I took care of the 5 and the 8. I have a period of 1 half. So 360 divided by 1 half is 720 degrees. So it takes 720 degrees to have a full cycle, peak to peak. And then the minus 90 means that D equals 90 degrees, so I have a shift to the right 90 degrees. So I'm going to make it easy on myself, and um, each box is 90. So this is 90, this would be 180. This would be um, 270, this would be 360, uh, this would be 540, making this 720. So this is negative 180, negative 360. So sine starts on the center line, and I would need um, a full cycle in 720. So one peak and one valley. So there is a full cycle right before our shift, and then one peak. I'm going to follow that pattern. I notice everything is spaced two boxes apart. Okay, so there's my graph before shifting it to the right 90 degrees. So 90 degrees would be one box. So I'm just moving each point over. Based on my scale and my graph, I am moving each point over one. And then connecting everything. And there is my graph. And um, there is no 84 point C. So for homework, 84, skip numbers 4, 5, 17 through 21, and 28, and 30. So quite a few there. Thank you.